Good afternoon from the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center. We are here for the ninth World Urban Forum. My name is Astrid, I'm with the IGC, and today I'm joined by Jennifer Masisi, Executive Director of the Kampala Capital City Authority, for this live feed straight from the World Urban Forum. I'll be asking Jennifer some questions about cities, urbanization, and Kampala, but please feel free to send in your questions. I have my phone here, and we will ask Jennifer questions that come in live from our audience. Jennifer, perhaps you can first describe some of the challenges facing developing country cities like Kampala. One of the biggest challenges, Astrid, is urbanization, rapid urbanization, uh, growing faster than the rate that we can control in terms of planning and finances. Our cities grow uh, by the day, and Kampala is one of the fastest urban growth areas in Africa. We have people coming in from all over, in addition to the uh, people that are displaced by um, conflict in the region, we also have a lot of people coming in from the rural areas, which is uh, a natural event in most of the mm -hmm. urban centers. So financing the needs uh, of these people, the social needs, the health needs, the infrastructure needs, the public transportation needs, is a very big challenge in the situation where most of us find ourselves where we do not have adequate financing and uh, that is a challenge for Kampala as well. Jennifer, since you touched on financing, let me ask you about Kampala's success story in this, in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, since KCCA came into being in 2011, you've managed to really increase your own source revenues. Could you um, tell our listeners a little bit about what you've done in that area? Uh, the first thing we've done, uh, the first thing we did uh, the first few years was to set up systems of financial management and accountability to be able to account, collect, and dispense of revenue in a way that is predictable, in a way that is properly accountable, in a way that is auditable, and to remove a lot of the human factor mm -hmm. that was uh, causing gaps in the revenue collection in terms of uh, corruption, in terms of um, all these things that come with the human element, the failures that come with human element in a revenue management system. We're also then able to identify sources of revenue that we had not been um, collecting from before and were able to grow revenue in that regard but also the ability to make it easier make it easier for the tax paying public to pay into the city uh, city collection accounts we, we did that and made it much more efficient so those are some of the things that we've done and we're continuing to grow but also redoing some of the things that have not been done for a long time. For example, the valuation right. of properties in the city that right. had not been done uh, for over six years. So we revalued the properties and that is bringing in money as well into the city. In addition to looking uh, at other areas where we can collect money. For those, who of us, uh, for those of you who are joining us right now, we're uh, live from Kampala at the World Urban Forum. And actually, if you would like to hear Jennifer talk more on the success story of, uh, in municipal finance in Kampala, Jennifer will be giving one of the key talks um, tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Kuala Lumpur time um, at the World Urban Forum. So, uh, Jennifer, we're here at the World Urban Forum. Could you perhaps describe some areas that forums like this that bring policymakers like you together with others from the world, how are they helpful for, helpful for the cities um, overall? I think one of the uh, biggest facts is that the challenges that we face as urban areas are not unique yeah. to, to Africa or to Uganda. There are challenges that a lot of urban areas have. And different cities over, all over the world are different stages of implementing solutions to these challenges. So when we come into a forum like this, we are able to share um, our own experience where we have been successful to encourage others uh, and, and say yes it can be done and this is what we've done to get a solution. But likewise we're able to learn from others that have got solutions, that have um, applied these solutions in their areas, look at the challenges they face and how they overcome them and these are areas that concern all of us and it makes it easier for us to implement or, 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 or promote these policies in a more um, acceptable way because they have been tried, they have been tested. So sharing experiences, sharing solutions, sharing challenges yeah. and sharing questions in areas where we need to work together to get solutions is what we benefit uh, from for our
Thank you. I mean, for, for everyone who's joining us right now, please do send us your questions. Jennifer, you mentioned very much about learning from other countries. Uh, this morning, the International Growth Center, together with the KCCA, uh, co-hosted a side event where we talked a little bit about the complexity of land for city growth, and, and particularly the very complex tenure system in, in, in Kampala. But we were joined by policymakers from Ghana, from Senegal, from Swaziland, mm. and they shared their experiences too. Could you reflect on that session a little bit? Uh, first of all, it was very comforting to know that Kampala is not the only one <laughs> that's uh, faced with challenges relating to land for development uh, of projects within the city jurisdiction. Uh, but also, uh, a very, very many learning points from what other jurisdictions, other urban managers have done towards getting solutions to these areas. And we may not have um, a total solution in any one place, but sharing the different experiences from the different continents like we had this morning yeah. and we're going to continue hearing helps us formulate a solution that will work for, for Kampala because basically the issues are the same only the context change many times but also the, the, the level right. the level of, of implementation is also um, different but we're getting a lot of um, support uh, in such fora, you have researchers that have done research in the various areas. Right. You have policy makers, you have implementers, you have um, people that are basically there to look for solutions. So right. it makes it easier for us that are implementing the solutions, that are formulating policies, that are persuading our governments in the different areas of our operation to, to, to get um, solutions, to, to, to get progress in the areas where we may have been stuck as an individual city, right. but now we're sharing uh, this platform and we're also able to link into uh, financing in terms of development partner support, research to support, and bodies like IGC that come in to support the work we're doing through research. So it's a very, very good um, period of interaction and sharing of experiences and solutions. We have our first question from a Facebook Live listener, Laura Silly from London who's wondering whether bus rapid transit systems can help solve urban congestion problems like in cities like Kampala? To a very big extent, uh, this uh, bus rapid transport system would help, especially if it's linked into other uh, forms of transportation. Uh, we have seen it working in cities like uh, Dar es Salaam, where it's solving uh, a lot of the public mass transportation uh, challenges. but. In places like Kampala, where we have challenges with the land ownership, it will come at a very, very high cost. Mm -hmm. So we have to, 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 to factor in the cost as we're looking at solutions as of the BRT as compared to other solutions mm -hmm. that are possible. Mm -hmm. So depending on where you're building the BRT system, I think you have to factor in the cost, the social issues, the political issues, and all those issues that come with financing sure. to be able to pick it as a good solution. But where I've seen it work in, in other jurisdictions, it has been a success. So, so you mentioned trade-offs between policies mm -hmm. that you have to face on a daily basis as a policymaker. Could you perhaps outline for our, our Facebook Live listeners, what are some of the policy priorities for Kampala mm -hmm. in the short to medium term? First of all, because of the rapid urbanization, one of our main uh, policies uh, and the needs for the future is urban planning being able to implement uh, an urban uh, development plan mm -hmm. that is consistent and able to match the speed of, of urbanization that we were challenged with right now. Secondly, we need to come up with policies that will help us get alternative financing yeah. so that we can finance the, um, the different projects that we want to implement in the city, the different um, needs that we have as a city, the meeting the public expectations, we need to come up with other solutions of financing in addition to own source revenue, in addition to government support, right. in addition to development partner support. So that's a very big policy area that we're looking at. Um, the other ones would have to do with um, policies to help us in on land, Right. The issues to do with land take, land acquisition, uh, the administration of land in, 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 in Kampala. 
in terms of implementing government projects because this is a very very complex very expensive right. um, area yeah, as we implement government projects as I said earlier because of the different land holdings that we have in right. the city it's extremely expensive and many times the projects are hampered or very very expensive more expensive than they would be in an area say, where the government owned all the land so we are looking at these as some of the key policies that we want to have put in place in their different forms to help us um, do more as an urban authority going forward. Um, Jennifer, we have another question coming in uh, from Musana Karts in Kampala. Um, and they're interested in, in the informal economy. As we know, like a very large part of our economy in, in Kampala is, is informal. Um, and so they fall out of sort of the revenue collection net for some, um, and so they were asking what is what solutions do you have to sort of revenue collection for for informal workers in the city mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we have to do initially is put these informal workers in organized settings mm -hmm. uh, we're encouraging the um, small-scale traders people that have been vending on the streets to go into formal markets and shopping places we would then be able to provide the social services that they need, the sanitation services they need, but also be able to collect some small revenues from them. Instead right. of right now where they're mobile and they're everywhere, they don't have the social services, but they also do not contribute to the city development in terms of revenue. We have started really easy to use systems in the markets where the market vendors pay a small fee right. to the city, and this fee is put back into services to the markets. Right. So that is something that we're working on. We're working with government to have additional workspaces right. so that um, we can have people in formal workplaces where they can be tracked, where can, they can be serviced, where they can be monitored, and where they can make a known contribution to the city. So we're coming to the end of our Facebook Live interview here live from the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center with Jennifer Musisi, Executive Director of KCCA. I would like to end with one question. You've main, mentioned the strong need for evidence for policy making. Can you please just elaborate a little bit for us how this is important to the KCCA and how you can use research um, to help you as a policy maker? When we're making policies, we have to base these policies on some evidence if the policies are going to be effective and if they're going to meet the needs for which they are met. And many, many times we would spend a lot of resources, a lot of time doing research before we can come up with a policy. Mm -hmm. So working with researchers through IGCs and, and, and other bodies, we are able to get research done in specific areas mm -hmm. where we operate and need to make policies so that we have empirical data, uh, proven data that we can use to make policies to be able to um, meet the challenges but also to be able to market, to be able to explain, to be able to sell these policies right. with evidence that is proven, evidence that can be relied upon to make yeah. the decisions and therefore be able to project uh, what the output of these policies will be. So we, we cannot um, overemphasize the need for research to us as policymakers. It makes the process shorter, yeah. it makes it more predictable, it makes it more reliable, yeah. and it also makes it more shareable because we want to share solutions with colleagues and, and other urban uh, policymakers. Uh, thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm glad to be here on this positive note about the need for evidence for policy making to support urbanization in developing countries. Mm. Jennifer is one of the spearheading policy makers in this area, leading the Cities That Work initiative together with academics from Oxford University, Harvard, and other policy makers around the continent to look at how evidence can be fed into policy. And with that very positive note, Jennifer, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, thank you to our Facebook Live listeners for joining us here in Kuala Lumpur for the World Urban Forum, the ninth World Urban Forum. And for those of you who are here with us, please come and join us tomorrow for the Urban Talk, yeah. where Jennifer Musisi will be outlining in more detail the success story that uh, Kampala has had with regards to its municipal financing. Um, I'm Astrid from the IGC. Thanks. Good evening. Thank you.